Oh, sorry, I can't remember. Sorry. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, but I still have music playing. I don't want music playing. There. All right, welcome to three things you might not know about YouTube. My name is Donna Eisone, and I am a convert to, to using YouTube. I used to hate YouTube. And now I use YouTube all the time, and there's, there are a few reasons why I use it, and I wanted to share those with you. Um, and so today, just so you know, we're, we're also, we have some online people that will be chiming in maybe throughout the session. Um, and so in an, in an effort to, to minimize the risk of technology failure, I think what I'm going to do is go through my slides first so that I'll give you the three things. And then I'll actually show you how to do the three things. So I, instead of trying to switch back and forth between slides and doing. So um, some of the reasons that I'm now a convert to, to using YouTube is because um, it's free. And it, by being free, it not only helps me, it helps my students. Because it means that then I can get my students making videos. That's my goal. I would like my students making more videos and me making less videos, or making videos of other things. Um, and so you, if you don't have an account, um, you, need a, you need a Google account in order to um, be a publisher on YouTube. You can obviously view any content you want on YouTube without an account, but if you're going to be a maker, you're going to need to sign up for an account. So that's your existing Gmail account. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a Gmail account, whatever you use to, to sign up for a Google account. And I just include this slide more as reference, then I'm not going to play this video, but um, I'll put in it, this will be in the portal, and you can go and watch this video on your own about um, the use of video in the classroom. Can you guys in the back hear me? Okay, good. It's a very long way back there. <laughs> All right. Thing one, YouTube playlists. So has anybody made a YouTube playlist? Okay. Three people. That's good. So one of the one of the nice things, and I'll show you I'll show you some playlists in a in a couple of minutes, and um, we'll, I'll show you how to make them. But one of the reasons that I didn't like using YouTube with my students was because there was my class, and then there was YouTube where everything exciting lives, right? And so there's always this fear of sending my students to YouTube where all good and exciting things live, that they're never coming back to my online class. And so I, I started getting worried about that, and so I would really think about whether I wanted to do this or not. And with playlists, I'm able to really um, curate their experience a little bit more so that a playlist allows me to use either videos that I've created or videos that other people have created and make a playlist of those videos. So it's great when you're, you know, you're covering a topic in class and you want to have, there's 15 great videos about how to, how to make a formula in Microsoft Excel. Great. I don't want to make that video myself. Here's 15 great ones that walk you through it in a variety of different ways that I've gone through and looked at, decided they were good enough, and make a playlist for my students so that they don't have to go and search for that content themselves. So we'll make one. Thing two is going to be the YouTube editor. And so anybody use the YouTube editor? Just a couple. Good. Excellent. The <laughs> things that people might not know. Um, you can record a video directly into YouTube. So some of you might have been in my pre-conference workshop about Premiere. Um, you can do a lot of that right on YouTube. And you can't do all of it. Premiere or iMovie or Movie Maker, all of, them, all of those applications are way more powerful than what's possible in YouTube. But what's possible in YouTube is about 90% of what you're going to want to do. You can add clips, you can trim clips, you can add titles, you can add transitions. And the thing that's so cool about it, 
for me is that I can have a student do it without having to download any software, and I don't care whether they're on a Mac or they're on Windows, because to me, for me that is the bane of my existence, is having to do two sets of directions and who's doing what. So having things that work in a browser make my life a lot easier and mean that students can then collaborate with each other and there's not like, here's the Mac camp and here's the Windows camp, like it's free for all. So we will um, record a little video into the YouTube editor and arrange it. And what's also cool is you'll be able to arrange it with your own clips that you've made and other people's clips. So let's say that what you want them to do is watch one of these beautiful 18-minute TED Talks. And there's something specific that you want to call out about that 18-minute TED Talk. You can make an intro video to, of yours and put that right before the TED Talk or right before the other content, as long as that content has got a, license, a Creative Commons license. So, and I'll show you how to do that. And then thing three is captions. And so how many of you, for how many of you has creating captions been a barrier to creating videos? Lots. Anybody done it on YouTube? Good, a few. But it's wicked easy. It's so, oh, hello, online student. Um, <laughs> um, it, and it's so, it's the easiest thing to do that I've ever done in terms of captioning. And so for many years, I've been making videos and making captions to go with those videos. And it's lucky for me that I am much better scripted than live and in person. And so I almost always make a movie from a script. And so I have a transcript that I can use to go with my video. Um, but you may not, you may not go from a script. If you don't, um, there's some there's uh, some good options um, of how to get captions, and I guess I'll talk about them now since we're talking about them. Um, the DEC grant, D E C T um, grant, is available to you as faculty or staff in the California Community College system to send either videos to or links to videos. So you could just email them a link to your YouTube video and they will provide you back a caption file. And you can tell them what format you want. It is a grant. It's an ongoing grant. We hope we have it for a long time. Um, <laughs> we hope. Um, you want to check with your, probably your DSPS office. Um, to see if they're already set up. But basically what you do is it's kind of an open PO that you can set up with um, with the College of the Canyons and you just send it out and they'll send you back captions. And so um, if you don't need real-time captions, like we have a captioner who's online with Confer right now. So we have a Confer session that's running behind the screen. And so there's somebody that's busy typing away. Um, but for most of our videos, that aren't they aren't live. We don't need a live captioner. I don't want to type it myself. I don't want to have to go back and try to transcribe it myself. But um, and, and so it's much cheaper on the system that's paying for all of this to caption already recorded material. So um, they're a really good option. And the the thing that's cool about captions in YouTube is that I don't have to time them out. So I don't want to say, at time zero, I said this sentence. At time six seconds in, I said this. That is, a, is painful. And for many years, that's what I did. And it had to be in the format of hours, colon, minutes, colon, seconds, colon, frames. So it keeps the pain to do that. Um, and so luckily with YouTube, you don't have to do that. Um, it's, a, it's a miracle. And it, and it will. It will listen to your audio file, and it knows when you take, po it, it waits for silences and assumes those are sentences. And so it lines it up, and we'll do it here, we'll do it live, and we'll see if it works. <laughs> um, and, I, and I have some that I've done that, um, done that with. The beauty of the captions is that, aside from making your video compliant, is that it makes it searchable. 
Google is deaf and blind. It can't see your video. It can't hear your audio. And so it can't search that. And so with the captions in YouTube, um, there's also a feature that is called interactive transcripts, which, allow, which I'll show you when we're off the PowerPoint part here. Allows me to search any captioned video for a phrase or word, and it brings me to that exact spot <laughs> in the video. So if I have made a seven minute movie that tells you all about how to record audio, and really all you care about is the last step about saving, how did, how did she save the file? You can jump just to that part of the video and start watching from there. Pretty cool. Okay, so um, that is all of my slides. Now let's go to the demo mode. Uh, let's see. I just close this out. All right, there is confer. It's okay, I'm just going to go on top of it. Okay, so here is YouTube. And you just never know what you're going to get here. <laughs> um, and so I'm I'm logged in to to my YouTube account already. Um, so just so you, just so you know. So the first thing I want to show you is playlists. So um, I'm going to go to this. Sorry, I'm in. The, I have to project in 800 by 600 mode, so you're getting a lot of kind of weird display here. So this is a playlist that I made that goes with all things Google, and what I did is I found a, a bunch of relevant YouTube videos and I added them into a playlist. And so now I have this Google playlist that I set up, and the Google playlist I can share. So just like any other YouTube link, I can make a link to this playlist. And you'll come up and you'll get here and you'll see that you can barely see it, but there's, um, there's a shelf here at the bottom, and it shows all of the videos that I've got included in my playlist. You can jump to any video in the playlist. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a caption style for YouTube videos. Caption YouTube videos. So you can curate other people's videos or your own. To add a video into a playlist is very easy. So let's um, let me find a video about um, how to create a playlist on YouTube. And so, um, here's one. And I'm sorry if you onliners are <laughs> good. Okay. All right. So let's say, hey, I love this video. It's a great video. Um, Underneath, underneath any video that you watch on YouTube, you'll find this Add To button. So normally, maybe probably what you do is click the Share button and get the link or the, or the embed code. If you just say Add To, I can add it to any of my already existing playlists. So I'll add it in here to my Google playlist. And I can make a note about it. Um, it will come up with the title already, but um, I'll add something. And so now I've added another video into my Google playlist. So you can do that for any number of videos. You can have a playlist that has two videos. You can have a playlist with a hundred. It's a good way um, to organize. Your, so just for yourself, even if you never share this playlist, it's just kind of a way to organize information. Like I started one for the ballet. Um, we had ballet tickets, and I wanted to go, and I wanted to be able to listen to the music before the ballet. And so I would go and find the music, and then just kind of file it in, into this playlist. 
and then I would listen to it when I had time. So it's a good way to organize. Questions about playlists? To create a new playlist, if I say um, um, this one, I think if I do it again, um, I can say enter a new playlist name and create one for live demo. <laughs> and then I can say whether it's a public or a private one. So do I want it to be found? And what will happen is that your title of your playlist is also um, part of the search feature in YouTube. So we, you might find that when you do, uh, when you look for videos, you might find that some are playlists. And then I can just create this. I'll make it public and create. Oops. Uh -huh. Yes? Yeah. Within your playlist, is there any way um, organizing the playlist that there is, yes. Repeat the questions. Okay. Is there a way to organize the um, organ organize the videos in a playlist? Yes, there is. So let me go um, let me go back to my playlists. Um, and I'll choose um, so I also have a playlist. I can make a playlist of videos that I like or watch later. <laughs> um, Where's my Google one? Because that has a lot of videos in it. And so when it comes, I can play them all. I can adjust the order. So this is number three now. If I just take it and drag it up, um, that should work. Let's see. I've done it where you, there, usually it's in that shelf mode. Um, I probably have to be in edit to do it, yeah. I probably have to do something like move it up. There are numbers. Yeah, I can't. There's probably a quick sort by views, actions, move to top. <laughs> There's some. There is another way. When it's in the shelf view, you can move it around like clips on a timeline. You got to be. This is my big complaint about YouTube. The interface has changes like every week. Right, it just sort of says, "Oh, today we've got red buttons." Right, so uh, just be careful. <laughs> yeah, and I think you can go back to the old one, um, but then you're in the old one, and all everybody else is in the new, and you're passe. That's right. There's also the quick sort over on the right. Yeah, so that's only sorting for me. Um, that's not sorting for playlist order. So when you order a playlist, you can have it. You can say play all in a playlist, and then it would just play every. The user experience would be they would listen to one, watch one video, and then the next, and the next just plays it through. Um, and those are good for that time when I'm at the gym on the rowing machine and my hands are busy and I am tired. At like every three minutes, there's a new video, and I have to go and queue it up. Like I can make a playlist. This for however long I want to be hands free doing whatever. So that's playlist. Let's look at the YouTube editor. Yes. Um, so this is the. How do you find the URL to link to your playlist? Sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to save my changes here. And underneath any playlist, again, this will be different based on what, whatever view you're in, but there's a share button for, for a playlist, and it gives you a URL for it. If you embed it, it will um, automatically go into play all mode, so it will start by playing the first one for your, your person. So if you, take, if you take a playlist and embed it into your course management system, it will then play the first video and the second video, and, and they can pause it. They still have buttons. Like they are still in control. Yeah, that they don't actually link out to That's right, and you can turn off whether you want it to allow, uh, whether you want it to have referrals and all of that. Um, another question about that: if you have like, uh, if you brought a video that has an ad, that's going to stay with it. That's right. The ad is never actually with the video. The ad is 
the ad is like they're going to plop that in front or on top of the video and then start playing yours, and so you'll get a different ad often uh, every it'll, time. It'll come at, you will have that in front of us. We can't. That's right. That's right. Unless you get out, unless your school is that has a, a educational YouTube account, um, you you have one of those, right, Blaine? And then you get long time, right? You get a, an hour is the limit. It's almost unlimited. Oh, you get so. Is it? Did it? It took a while though to get your. Yeah, it took uh, a lot of uh, negotiating with Google to get that. So, but there is one for the California Community Colleges. And it's cacommunitycolleges.edu. And if you write to me and friend me on Facebook and send me five thousand dollars, <laughs> so that's if you want it. Um, and you, you can check with your school folks also because you may already you may have an account um, that this, that your, your college has that you can just use as part of. And that gives you longer upload times too. So um, as an average citizen, I get I get I think you start with 10 minutes of time, and then the more you use it, the more time you get. And so I'm up to 15 minutes of of duration. And frankly, I never make a movie that's longer than 15 minutes anyway. So for me, the the YouTube duration really works. It really forces me to stay small, short. Okay, so let's let's record right into YouTube. So um, again, I'm logged in uh, over here, and if I click the upload button, it's going to give me a choice of uploading a video that I might have already made that's on my computer, um, and I can even and then I can record from my webcam. And so I'm going to record right from my webcam here, just for. You could also have another camera hooked up to this, but I'm going to just go right from my webcam just to show you how it's done. And so we did a little test before you walked in here to make sure that this was going to work. And so we've got, um, I, I'm actually, the, I'm using the, the camera that's on my laptop. There you go, see? Um, and I'm using, the, the audio source is this Polycom which is this um, little desktop mic that is just a USB mic that's plugged into my computer. And I'm only using this in this instance so that the audio, my speaking, goes through to the confer folks, too. So we're multitasking on this mic. Yeah, and these are great. Hundred dollars for uh, about a hundred dollars for these polycom mics. But frankly, I would not be. I wouldn't use this if I was at home. I would just use my lap. I, I did a demo. This I did a trial this morning of this. In case this doesn't work, I can show you another one and pre-baked at home. And I'm even wearing the same shirt, so you wouldn't even know. <laughs> I know they'll be like, you didn't say that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Just close this window down a little bit so that I can see my little script here. Because <laughs> I told you I'm much better from a script. And the reason I'm doing this now, I, I don't normally make this kind of a movie with a script, but I'm going to use the script now because I don't want to take the time to transcribe it and I want to show you how the captions work. So it will be a per pathetic performance, but let's not let's not be critical. <laughs> Here, I am gonna, so I am going to say just a few things about doing this, though. Is that um, I I've turned up the um, I've turned up the volume on my sound input, which I guess probably isn't true anymore um, with this mic. And I've got my script, and I've made my script in a large font, which is always what I do. Um, because it helps me read slower, and it helps me not be squinting at my screen to try to read it. And I'm going to put it in the middle of the screen. Now this is, again, I normally don't do this, but I, what I'm trying to minimize here, because you'll, you'll be able to see this when I record, and this is a very common thing. I see a lot of faculty making welcome videos like this, and I, I want you to make it just a little better if you can, which is, um, and, and this will be no better, but. I want you to um, it, it, minimize 
you looking like you're reading a script is the plan. And so you might notice that I've moved my script to be in the middle of my screen because that's where my camera is, is, is right in the middle of my screen. What? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Good. See, there's a fourth thing you didn't, might not have known. <laughs> and so, um, so I move it to the middle, and I keep the yes. I think that the around is it just turned on so this is kind of giving weird feedback whoever has that or maybe there's going to no that's not it we're we're probably getting a little feedback because of confer through okay. through this and so um because my speakers are on and my mic is on and okay. so um she's feeding through the polycom and she's going out I know I just yeah microphone in Speakers out, speakers back into the mic. I told you this is a live demo, and so when you, all things will go wrong. Like now, I can't get this chair to go down anymore. I did. I did push the button. Yep. And I'm the one to put it up there. Might be this one. Tell you what, let me sit in it. Whoosh. Nope, not that one. Oh God. I know, we are. I know, we are. It's just like you're great. I know, it's great. And the control people, I can't wait to see what's in the window there. Uh, and so what I'm what what my stunt double is doing here is um, <laughs> is is lowering my chair so that um I'm gonna move this over just for a minute, so that I have a little more control of the camera angle because what I really don't want is to be shooting up on my chin like this, yeah. looking down, cause, right? And I and I don't want to be kind of like looking no, down. I know. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I don't want to be looking down on my students when I narrate to them either. And I don't want to I don't want to be so low that I'm kind of like looking up, right? I just want to be I, I want to be as, have my camera as close to my eyes as possible. That it's a straight shot. And so, I, so I, if I sit a little lower, I can adjust my laptop screen. If you're using a real video camera, you can go at will. But and so, I'm going to go like this and move this way. And I've got a nice background behind me. And you'll notice when it was over here, oh, everything's backwards. I have this nice knob thermostat in my shot. Right, these are the little things that you just notice, please, before you start recording. Right, like it's so simple to solve that problem that I don't want to have to try to edit it out or do something else later. And so, um, sorry, um, everything is mirrored here. Okay, so let's do it now, 20 minutes later. <laughs> so I'm going to just leave this here. I make short line length so I'm not scanning across the whole screen. And I'll try to record this. Of course, with 800 by 600, I have to move it a little. Right. With YouTube, you can record your own video online without needing to purchase or download any software. This means that you or your students can make videos at the drop of a hat and publish them instantly. Hard working at 800 by 600 here. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, let's just play. Let's let's watch it. We should be able to hear it too. Again, no acting complaints. Right, that's not bad. So, um, ooh, yeah, so I can hear that now. Okay. Stop. Good, publish. Okay, so I'm, I've got this video that I've now just recorded, and um, I'm going to go in 
and just give it a title aside from this default title. Um, and I can set in here um, if it's public, unlisted, or private. Public means anybody can find it. Unlisted means you need to have the link. Which, so if you want to keep it only to your students, just post that link in your course management system. Private means uh, nobody can see it, essentially. And so it doesn't get indexed. And it's very hard. I have not been successful at getting this to work, like saying, here's the person, the one person I want to see it. Um, still can't ever see it. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it right now as public. And so for me, there's a little risk of putting it public right at this moment because, when, because I want to edit it still. Um, and so theoretically, somebody who is subscribed to my YouTube channel is going to get a notification that I've just published a new video. And boy, is it good. Um, so, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it public anyway. Yeah, I know. That's just, what? That's how I lose all my subscribers. And so in the advanced settings, um, I can go in and turn. This is, uh, somebody was asking me about this the other day. Um, I can go in and turn off whether I want comments to be allowed or not, um, which is good for, for some cases. Um, and then I almost always leave it set, yes, make this video available on mobile phones because I watch a lot of YouTube videos on my iPhone, so um, it'll make it available to everybody. Okay, and so I want to, um, thank you, okay, to video on page. So here's the video on the page. With YouTube, you can record right. your own video online without needing to purchase. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's edit it. I don't like the pause at the beginning, and I don't like the pause at the end. So while I'm viewing it and I'm logged in, I have some enhancement opportunities. Unfortunately, one is not lose 10 years. <laughs> or, or 10 pounds, neither of those is a choice. Um, With YouTube, you can record your own video on... Boy, I'm getting tired of seeing that. But um, So what I want to do is I want to trim, the, trim the video. So I'll click trim. And so look at the quality. And online folks, if, if it was bad before, it's going to be really bad. Um, the quality is, is blocky because you're because I'm editing video that isn't here. It's out there on Google servers. And so I'm editing, I recorded this online, it's online, and now I'm editing it online. And so the quality will improve, but this is just like the best it can do right at this second. And so at the bottom here, for those that were in the premiere or who have used any video editor, this is very similar. I have an in and an out point. And it, you can see it's doing its best to update me about where I am in the video. So I see my lips are moving there. And so I want to get to the place where I think my lips start moving. Maybe I was too far. And, and I personally like to start with my mouth closed if I, if I have an option because it's never closed otherwise. So. And at the end here, I want to stop before I looked away. So still talking there, mouth moving. And so I'm going to call that good enough for, for sake of demoing and say done. There's some other options. You can record your own video online without needing to purchase or download any software. This means that you or your students can make videos at the drop of a hat and publish them instantly. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Awesome. You guys are all. Hi, Heather. 
question for her? Yes, please. He says, can you talk a little about Creative Commons license? I can. So it's at the um, info on, so, so uh, let me talk about Creative Commons in just one second. So in the, um, in this editing, you get some effects also. So if you want to uh, change the colors and the hues and you can enhance your audio, you can, you can play around with that on your own. Um, so now I've got a, a, a video that I've recorded and edited bits of, and, and I just want to make sure I've saved. If I go into the info on this video, the, um, this is where I can change the title of the video. And over here on the side, there's also um, license and rights ownerships. So a standard YouTube license was all we had up until, I don't know, maybe a, six months ago or something. And um, now we have two options, which is the standard YouTube license or a Creative Commons license. If you license your video as Creative Commons, what that means is not only can anybody view your video that you want, that if you set it to public, any, Anybody can view that video, but then anybody else can take it and also re-edit that video or edit it into their video. So having a Creative Commons license allows you to share your content with other people. And uh, let me show you the benefit that you might find by doing a Creative Commons attribution. Is once, once you have a Creative Commons attribution, um, you can go in and take this clip and edit it together with other clips if you want. And so um, I'm going to do that, but I, before I do, did, did you have a question? Somebody have a hand up? No. Um, before I edit this together with other content, what I want to do while I'm here is I want to show you how to add that captions file. So. I've got my edited video. I'm going to click captions. Now, probably a lot of you know that when you go to any video on YouTube, if it's not captions, you can use that sort of transcribe beta to, to try to get captions. That works sometimes and doesn't work sometimes. Sometimes you get computer poetry. And so what I, um, and I don't need to do that. I don't want it to try to figure out what I'm saying because I know what I said. I have a script. Um, so I'm going to add a new captions or transcript. And I'll choose the file. And the file is my script that I just read you. And this is a, uh, let me just see if I can find it. This is the, this is a text document in TXT format. So it's written in my case and um, text edit on a Mac or it's in WordPad or Notepad if you're on Windows and saved as a text only file. It has no information about timing, anything in it. Just It's just my plain old script. And so I'll choose that file and then it's asking me what type is it. Is it a captions file which has all of the time codes in it, meaning I'd already gone through and said I said this at this specific time. So if you're going to send your stuff out to get captioned from DECT, it costs everybody the same amount of money. If you get a, a true captions with a uh, file that has all the time code, or if you just get a simple transcript, you can get both. You can just say how many formats you want it in. And so if you have a captions file, use it because it'll be exact. Um, this works most of the time, but your real timed out one will be much more accurate. So if you have it, use it. If you don't have it, then use this transcript file. And I can set the, um, the language setting for this. And what that means is I'm going to tell, I'm telling YouTube that this is an English, an English captions so that then when, when YouTube goes and does its computer translation, it says I know this is English and so when somebody says show me captions in Spanish, YouTube will, capt will take my text document, translate it into Spanish, and time it out the same way. Awesome. 
So I'm going to upload this file, and it's going to it will take a little bit here for for this to to do its thing. Now this morning when I tried this, I don't know I don't know if this is going to work. So demo gods, please. But um, the, the audio quality needs to be fairly good for it to know how to to caption. And again, I I haven't I did it at home on the built-in mic, and it worked fine. Whether it will work from this with the fans and all that, I don't know. But we'll try it. The other thing is, what I also tried at home is if you, I uploaded the captions track, then edited out the video, like I edited the head and tail of the clip to get rid of that silence. So it, it was there. The captions stayed there, but they were timed wrong. So it doesn't retime the captions if you edit out a, a bit of the video. So the answer to that problem is if you, so let's say you made a clip, you uploaded your captions, and then in a few days you decided, really, I don't like the first sentence and I want to cut it out. The, the thing to do is to clip that sentence out, cut it out of your Word document that has that sentence, and just re-upload a, a, a new captions file. Okay, good. So um, it, it worked. Let's see. With YouTube, you can record your own video online without needing to purchase or download any software. This means that you or your students can make videos at the drop of a hat and publish them instantly. Woo! <laughs> so that's awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned earlier to the rest of the minute, but I was taking notes and then I realized that this is going to be archived, correct? It is being archived. It is. So I don't need to take notes since I can go look at it again. I just thought I'd mention that again to Greg Ivan, but once people take notes, we're going to have to be looking for it. Okay, good. Uh, so Pat was saying that this is being archived, and so you can watch it again and again and again. And you can make all my hits on YouTube go way up. Let's go. <laughs> you can publish it to YouTube with captions. It's awesome. It's awesome. This is the easiest captioning I've ever done. Ever. And so even if you, for e so, so I know there's a lot of kind of, I have done every wacky solution possible to try to get a transcript file. Like I have Dragon, and I'll have another computer up next to me that's running Dragon and listening at the same time as I'm recording this one, and, and that will work too. And so you'll get a, a Dragon file. If, like I. I'm impatient. I don't want to wait three days. <laughs> I want to do it now, right? And so I'll just do it now. I'll fix the, you know, I'll fix the automatic transcription and then upload it, and you're done. Yeah. I was just wondering, um, where did you go initially to the video tape? Upload. Hmm. Click the upload button on, on YouTube. So, you, so I'm in YouTube and I'm logged into YouTube, okay. and then I just click the upload button and. The, and get the option record. Yeah. So you mentioned that um, so if you had to edit it while well, after it already been published. That's right. So there was no, you couldn't do private and then change later. You could, yep. Okay. So you could start and then start and then start and then That's right. You can start, you can, yep. I'm just repeating for the online folks. You can start, um, you can start while you're working on your video, setting it to private. And then once you're ready to go public, set the permissions to public at any time. You can change who has access to that video. Yeah, Eric. No. Because Premiere, no, because Premiere, um, Premiere will bring it up as a as just text on screen. It's not screen readerable, and so it won't be. This is a true text caption file, and so and YouTube won't be able to search a title because it sees that as an image. It doesn't. It's not real text. These files that when you upload a caption file are when it's searchable, translatable text. So let me show you. Um, let me show you uh, the interactive. Captions. Um, while well we're on captions here, um, 
looking for that folder. Oh, 800 by 600. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I can't. Can I still, can't Three things. Here it is. So, um, so this is a um, this is one of my. Every time you press record, you get a new track in Audacity. To avoid loss. This is one of my captioned videos that's uh, that, that I'd already done, pre-baked, and so. Um, Anytime there's a video in YouTube that has captions, underneath the video, when you're just playing the video, so I'm not any, I have no special permission on this just because it's mine, um, there's this little button here, interactive transcript. And so if I click that button, it brings up, this is the entire transcript of my video. Now, in my case, it's a pretty short video, and so this is not, like, holy cow, look, she found this thing. But any t so if I want to find something, I can go into just my br whatever browser you're using, and I'm going to say find. And here I'll say, uh, show me um, shift key. And so it finds shift key in the transcript, and then I can click it. And play. Select each track you want to join by holding the shift key down as you click in the track header. Cool, huh? So it brings you just a little bit before the keywords that you were looking for, and then you can play from there. I can. Any, uh, and it's different in every browser, but um, I, I clicked the interactive transcript button just so I could see it. I, I don't need, but I want to. I want to see the whole thing. And then I went into my edit menu in Firefox. It's also in the edit menu. Edit find. And then I get this little search bar, like you were searching for text on a web page. That's all it's doing, right? And so if I said, e show me uh, easier. merged into one. This will make it easier to edit. Awesome, huh? All right. Yeah. They can be translated, yes. And so when you're in a when you have a captions, I'm set to English. I I uploaded it knows I uploaded English captions. I can then say translate captions and say what language I'd like them translated into. And then, again, you get the Google translator, but it works. And were those time codes that we just saw in the added? Those, those, were what, those are what YouTube added automatically. So let me show you, um, OK, online question. Laura uh, wants to know, can you choose which translation? Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not too good. She wanted to know. Um, what you do when the machine translation wants to supplant your word trans transcript? How do you edit your own transcript? I'm not. Yeah. You know, YouTube will sub sometimes supply a machine translation right. if you don't get there first. Oh, it it doesn't. Um, you just upload your own, and that's what it uses. It'll use whatever you give it, and so. Um, the, the other one is. You can always delete the, the the, the, there's no, there's no. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a file that's ever made there. It's like it goes there when the when the machine tries to do it, and it, it's not really there. I've downloaded. I've taken the machine one and downloaded it to the text editor. And then, it. yeah, that's a great way is to take it. So if you don't have a transcript, you can let the you can let YouTube try to figure it out, and it's you know it's. It depends on your content and how the quality of your mic. That's right. I mean, and I have a problem where whenever I say MP3, it thinks I'm saying empty, right? And so then, and, and it, you know, but it is faster than typing it. So let me show you how the video editor. We've got we've got five, ten minutes, right? Let's. It shouldn't take me ten minutes. I hope. 
So um, all I did was in YouTube, I just t typed slash editor. There's probably some other way of getting there, but I don't know it. Um, so if you go to youtube.com slash editor, um, a, a video editor comes up. So instead of editing, we edited one clip. Now we can edit clips together. And so I can go, if I click on the, um, the video camera icon, what it's showing me here right now are all of the videos in my account. These are all my, my own videos. And so let's say I want to start with this one that I just recorded. Oops, I already, I'm going to make a new project. So I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to drag this little clip that we just recorded. And I could add any other of my clips to this. But let's do something a little more interesting. I'm going to go and click the CC. And when you click CC, what comes up are anybody's video, YouTube video, that they uploaded as public with a Creative Commons license. You can search for this. This is just, I mean, this is showing you the first, the top hits of this. You can search for Creative Commons licensed, licensed information. Chances are, if you're going to do this in the real world, you would have found the right clip that you want already so that you wouldn't be searching here. I'm just going to choose one of these, one of these clips because um, I'm not being picky right now. And I'll put the close-up of the lake into the timeline. And so now I have 23 seconds of my intro, and then I have 15 seconds of the lake. Do you want to see it? With YouTube, you can record your own video online without needing to purchase or download any software. This means that you or your students can make videos at the drop of a hat and publish them instantly. Okay, what do you think? So I don't think I saved my edit. I think that's what happened. But so there's there's somebody else's out of focus. Look there, the lake. And so if I want, I can go in and add a transition between these two clips. So I'll add something goofy so you can really see it. Again, this is all online. Haven't done, haven't downloaded anything. Oh. <laughs> awesome, huh? You want a title? I know. I know. Really, what I miss is the old toaster with the sheep that would fall down. <laughs> I mean, you used to have this great sheep transition where the sheep would just come down and make a big sheep pile. Um, and so I want to, I'll be real artsy and I'll take this centered title and I'll put it over this footage and I'll say, um, and I can change the color so that people can actually see it. I can change the size of it. And you can also add music. All right, here's going to be my nice star transition. And there's the title over somebody else's video clip. Woohoo! <laughs> um, and so then when it, I guess the last step is to um, publish this. Um, I'm not. Oh, you want to show them? I'll show you the. Oh, sorry. I can show you the music. So, but I didn't just blow it. I think I didn't. I, did I not save it? I didn't save it. I hit publish and then I hit back. All right. You know what? It, you know what happens. I mean,
So you can, um, and if it, so the captions will stay on the clips that have captions, and so they'll be my clip plays with its captions, and then if the next clip doesn't have captions, it won't play with captions. So they're each their own clip still. So um, that's great, yeah. Is your time limit still 10 minutes even when you're putting them together? So if I wanted to put no. 20 minutes, Martin Luther King. No, it's, it's not because it's each cl it's not redoing anything to the clip. What the question was is your time limit still 10 minutes? And it was it was it's not 10 minutes because. So you do an intro, plug the speech, and then do an exit, put it all together, and have a 30 minute. That's right. That's right. And actually, now that you say it, that's the way to solve. The whole problem, right, is that you just record each clip under 10 minutes, and then you could do that. I didn't even think about doing that, but for you people that make long videos, that would be great. Um, you can add music or other sound files to the background. Can you, if, if somebody else is speaking, but can you add that background music to it? If does it, does it only, only, can you add multiple sounds? You can. So um, let, let me. Um, let me find a different. Let me. There's probably one in here that has that has been saved. Um, so this is mine from a previous a previous demo that I actually successfully saved. Um, and so there's music. The music that's in here is all Creative Commons licensed music. And so um, I can take that and add it. Underneath, it, I'm going to choose something low down just so I can actually see it. And um, oh, it's, uh, there's actually one already in here. Uh, and so that's the music that's going to go with this video. And it also has, if this clip had audio, it would be playing the audio from that clip also. I don't, maybe one of them does. So noticeably missing from, from this, just as an FYI, is, um, is you yesterday the projector just went up on me, um, is still images. So you cannot add still images into here. They have to be video clips. YouTube doesn't take still images, and so you, it has to be a video clip that you've turned into a still that has a certain amount of duration. It can't add duration to a still image. So I assume that's coming, and I'm hopeful that you can add music like this. Says to me, like, oh, would it be great if you could just upload audio-only files to YouTube? That would be nice too. So that might happen. Yeah. Is there a tutorial on here for how to do everything? There is. It's in that Google playlist of mine, and I'll put that on the portal. Okay, and then also, would you give your, uh, how would you let students know where to go to get videos? Is this to the uh, online platform, or would you give them a, an address to go, or how would that work? To get you to, to, to make their own videos, or do this? Yeah. you want to see some videos. Oh, I would just publish the playlist URL, and I put the URL to my playlist inside the course management system, or send them an email, or however you would normally contact them. If you're in a classroom, I'd write it up on the board. Somebody wants to know, can you, can you clip edit a video you borrow? Yes. You yes, you can clip edit in and out points on a, um, this is somebody else's clip here, the sailboat, and I can go in and uh, click the scissors. Excellent. Excellent. What's awesome is so on big, long videos, you want to, you don't want to lose your students, right? And you want to make sure they see the three minutes that you really wanted them to see. And so you can actually cut the video to be three minutes and put yourself before it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So Excellent job. <laughs> there you go. Good thing. Good thing. So I'll put up the slide but there's nothing there's no I'll put the slides on the portal too, but the playlist I'll put there. Absolutely. They're applauding you online. All right, good. Woo!